Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about design of capping beam in construction, especially reinforced concrete capping beam. First, let's see the arrangement of capping beam in construction. We have piling piling system under the construction to take the gravity and lateral loading and in most cases is designed for lateral loading and for showering system and this is the plan view and we have section view here we have some piles and capping beam running on top of the piles and also section view on the other side for individual pile that we have pile here and capping beam on top of that so the first question is that do we need capping beam in construction the answer is yes if we have piling system definitely we need capping beam on top of the pile for some main reasons first of all to tie all the piles together that's we call integrity of the piling system to act as designed second one is just foundation for columns and walls and the other one is transferring the loads from columns slab walls at any load above the ground or above the piling system to the pile and in some cases it is just designed for holding earth and separating from neighboring system so we know what is capping beam and why we need that in construction just remember capping beam is not necessarily reinforced concrete we may have other types like timber it depends on the loads and the construction importance and also we may have steel beams let's go for more details about capping beam capping beam is generally is in the shape of rectangle and it is extended about 50 or 100 or sometimes more on either side of the pile yeah, let's say if the pile diameter is d so the capping beam width should be d plus 50 or 100 or 150 or generally we say that 50 is the minimum and depth is around 500 400 but for safe design or just a, we will see that here we, we may have just some punching issue beam bending issue and shear issue let's say we always go over 500 for depth in a piling system when we have capping beam here and piles we will have columns above the capping beam the position might be in the middle close to column close to the pile or just on top of the pile and it doesn't matter we just need to transfer the loads from the column and also the walls or infill materials between the walls on the capping beam to design that so capping beam for slabs also when we have capping beam the slab can be sit on top of the capping beam or capping beam is a support for a slab or sometimes if the geometry is a limit we're going to have the same level of capping beam and slab and tie together with very strong double in every 500 or a meter or just whatever required to have the load transfer between slab and capping beam so if you see this general shape of the piles capping beam columns and infill materials it will be simply transferred to this shape continuous beams point loads for columns and udl or unified distributed load for infill materials like walls or any infill so we have simple we have continuous beam and we have length of spans and we have position of these loads on each point so definitely we can 
calculate we can analyze this beam and to find the acting internal forces like bending and shear so we have column we have walls and we have the loads on each element from structure analysis by softwares or just hand calcs and we're going to have beam design capping beam design under those elements to transfer the loads to foundation or for, to piling system so we have continuous beam and we will need bending positive and negative for tension compression area we will have shear to design for tie bar and also we may have punching it is very unlikely in general but it is better to check all the time just remember when p is very close to the r or when the column that is that's carrying big load is very close to the pile let's say this beam this part this column is very close to this one or if this distance distance is center to center is very short we may have big shear transfer air shear transfer in this region and uh, it might be very risky area for shear and uh, definitely for punching so always it is better to check that area so we will have continuous beam loads from column and also loads from infill materials that might be same or not so we will have bending diagram bending diagram is generally like this it is still just a general shape and you may need to have just simple analysis by software or just hand calcs to find negative and positive bending moments in each span and we, will, we may have shear diagram that is changing or transferring in reaction point and also point load points and we're going to have the maximum or minimum values for design and as i said before we may have punching issue especially when the column is very close to the pile and we have short area to transfer big loads so it might be very risky and in these areas we may need to have just very a little bit deeper capping beam to provide the required shear element so we're going to have bending and shear for bending we're going to have maximum positive and maximum negative maximum positive to design reinforcement at the bottom and maximum negative to design reinforcement on top section top of the section so m max for positive area should be just maximum of this m2 m4 m6 or whatever we have and for negative area we, we're going to have m1 m3 m5 or whatever we have in just if the section is continuous and more than these three supports to find the maximum negative and positive bending to design this reinforced part and for shear for shear we're going to have positive or negative doesn't matter from this diagram and then we're going to design tie bar for that one generally for tie we're using n10 n12 and more if required and supply around the main bending bars or just long bars for bending the for bending action just remember if we have more than just edge long bars we may need more than just one stirrup or just one tie to have a closed section for shear action this is always missed this is, I, I can say that it is most of the time is missed and we need to make sure that 
if we have more and shear is a shear is an issue in design definitely we need to have more ties to have shear action taken by the beam for the applied load especially when the column load when the structural level is structure has multiple stories and the load on the column at the ground level or on top of the capping beam is big and we may have shear problem or big shear and definitely in these cases remember to check for extra ties just for tie bars together so if i go and check in summary from the first slide capping beam is generally wider about 50 each side or 100 or more depending on your geometry and limits and the main reason for capping beam is to transfer the load to foundation and also integrity of the piling system definitely we need that and if it's missed we can say that the piling system is not integrated and here just remember that we are not we can put slab on top of the capping beam or just double it to capping beam and provide the required connection forces by dowels and if you have just good estimation of or good calculation of the p1 p2 or column loads and infill material loads there's no issue to design the capping beam capping beam is just remember always wider than the pile and 500 is almost the minimum depth for safe design. Thanks for listening and watching this video.